Welcome back to the homestead. So we're back on the Dodge project and this morning's project is governor springs. So on the diesel engine inside the injection pump, there's a governor that uses centrifugal force to judge RPM. And the, the Dodge Cummins P pump is I think around 2800 RPMs factory. But of course this one has 300,000 miles on it. And it seems to start defueling around 21, 2200 RPMs under load. So we've gone ahead and we ordered, you know, actually it came with our kit through Power Driven Diesel, a three to four K governor spring kit. And we're gonna go ahead and install it. We're gonna show you how to install it. It's actually really simple from what I can tell. I've never done one before, but we're gonna do it together. I have the luxury here that I have the fender off the truck. Um, you'll see when we get over there working, it's a bit of an awkward spot, but as long as you take your time, it's a pretty straightforward process. The tools you're going to need are, in my case, a 7.8 socket and a breaker bar to roll the engine over with. Um, actually, the tool from Power Driven Diesel came with my kit to do the governor springs. You can use a regular screwdriver. From what I can tell from the videos, you want a couple different size magnets and, of course, the governor springs. So we'll open these up and we'll show you what we got. They come all zip tied together. We're of course going to cut that zip tie. And we're not going to go to 4,000 RPMs. If you want to try to go to 4,000 RPMs on one of these stock 12 valve Cummins, from what I understand, you really need to start changing the valve springs because they will float and then things touch things and bad things happen. So to go to 3,000, everything but the little spring in the middle is going to get used. So you'll see there's, a, uh, there's two springs and there's a base plate that will go down in there that we'll show you when we get over there. So we're going to go ahead and take the two springs out set them back in the bag for now and we'll put our stock stuff in this bag as well so we're ready to get over to the truck and we're ready to get rolling on the truck so we're going to get set up see if we can get some camera angles for you guys so you can really see what we're doing on this one because it's important to to focus on what we're doing not necessarily the whole engine so hold on we'll be right back all right so we've gone ahead and we've taken our fuel lever and our fuel sunday uh shut off off of the injection pump and we'll show you when we put that on there'll be a separate video because we have to adjust the fuel solenoid we actually found in our case we weren't getting full open on the uh, fuel shut off there's also a little keyway on this fuel shut off shaft here that sometimes is loose in our case it was really tight so we didn't try to get it out but you want to keep an eye on that then there'll be a wire which you can see There'll be a safety wire on most of these. It covers this governor plug and you have to cut that wire out of the way. So once you've got to the point where you can see this plug on the side of your injection pump, and I think you can see the whole engine right here maybe. So you can see the whole engine. So you know you can see your lines here, your AFC. You notice we've got our brake stuff out of the way. So the part we're working on is right down here. So if you're you know if you have the fender and everything on your truck i'm trying to give you some reference so now we'll go ahead and we'll we'll bring you right in on this because this is where we're going to be doing most of our work and again that same seven eights i forget what the metric equivalent is but that same seven eights loosens that plug and we want to take that right out of the way now you may very well get some oil out of this in our case it's it's down but you'll see we don't see anything useful right there so we're going to go ahead and we're going to crank the engine over using the alternator that same seven eighths and what we're watching for we should see the end of that spring come into the window there And I don't know how much turning it takes to get there. I'm going to turn it a bunch and keep looking. Yep, we're almost there. So bad. So we're going to spin that 
nut out of there to the point it's loose and then we're going to use our magnet to take it out. So I'm going to reach in there with that and just turn that right out of there to about there where it's loose and then we're just going to turn it out with our magnet. Let's set that out of the way. There's not a lot of space to drop stuff down in here, but if you drop something I've heard of people taking playing cards, rounding them. We will be reusing that. And that. And the largest spring stays in. So if you can get those two springs out. And you got to be real careful because there are some shims in there. We will not be reusing those, but you don't want to drop them down into the uh, injection pump, as I mentioned. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Before we do drop one down in the pump, we're going to get a small screwdriver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my screwdriver right down the center and that way I can't physically drop anything down the pump. I can be a little more cavalier about getting my stuff out. So and then down in there still is a base. Okay, so I told you we wouldn't be using any of those old parts to come out of the base. So here's your base, here's the intermediate spring, and the big spring that comes with the power driven diesel. We left the little spring out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that up there like that and tip it right in place. We're good there. We're going to put our retainer back in. Just like so. And then we're going to get our retainer nut. And we're going to start that on there using that same magnet. Okay, so that's on there enough it can't fall off. We're going to take our tool. And what you want to do is you want to go until you, f until you feel resistance. Like there's a click. So you go click one, one, two, three clicks. So to recap that, we're going to back that off. You go until you, until it falls into really the first click, which is right there. So then we're going to go one click, two click, three click. And that's how we adjust that. So now what we have to do is we have to roll the motor 180. So I'm going to run over there to the alternator and I'm going to have Sue watch that and tell me when the other set of springs is up there. And you'll see what I'm doing right here. The motor really only rolls one way when you're doing it with the uh, alternator. The belt slips the other way. You got just the leading edge of it showing now. You're about a third of the way up the window. just a touch farther but you can come take a look and see what you think. Yep, we'll go a little bit more. That'll work. And it's not the end of the world if you if for some reason you do go by, you just have to go all the way around. And don't take the other spring back off, right? So we'll do the same thing. Loosen that up to the point where there's no resistance. Take our magnet. Set our 
keep her up there. We'll take this piece off. Put that up there. And now is where we're going to get that little screwdriver, which I think I dropped. So I'm just going to grab another one. So maybe we have lots of screwdrivers. Just make sure you sift through the speedy drive before you throw everything away, right? shims and the base which we will not reuse so. all right so same as the other side we got the base we got the two springs I'm gonna set it on the shaft slide it into place like that I'm gonna put our keeper in And then we got our nut. I have to find our magnet right there. And you see the nut wouldn't really fit down the injection pump anyways, but no point in challenging. And the same thing will go. I like to tighten it up first and back off just because everything's settling into place. So there's our first click, our first detent. So one, two, three. So that's it. That's how you uh, set the power driven diesel. And you want to make sure your O-ring is on there. Snug that up. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to take care of the old parts real quick. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to put that fuel arm back on just so they won't lose that keyway. So let's take all these and put them back in our bag. So, for whatever reason we need to go back to stock, we have that ability. I like to keep all the old parts like this because one never knows. Hanging. So we're going to put our fuel lever back on just so we don't lose that keyway. So you'll see the keyhole in the fuel lever. It only goes one way. So you just get that started on there, push it on like that. And it's an 8 millimeter socket in my case. And then what you need to do, we're not going to do it right now because we're going to be messing with this AFC, but you want to make sure that when your solenoid, you see how much travel that has, that's off and that's on. You want to make sure that your solenoid is allowing it to go all the way to on, otherwise you're not getting full fuel. We have also, probably have you zoom out just a little bit. Um, in here, this uh, your throttle cable comes down through here and hooks to this. And then there's a linkage that goes from here to here that runs the actual throttle in the pump. And it's basically a, a flow you know, valve, if you will. We've gone ahead and we've rebuilt this. There's some plastic bushings in there that was real sloppy. We've ordered a couple new of the balls that go on here. We've ordered the new sockets that go on that linkage because that linkage was real sloppy. So just tightening everything up while we're in here. So I hope that helps you, you know, with the uh, power driven diesel governor springs. The little tool, while not necessary, was pretty easy because it fits on over that pin in the center like you saw. 
Um, different manufacturers of governor springs have different ways of installing them. Some go by measurement. Power driven diesel goes by number of clicks. So, you know, follow the manufacturer's recommendations. And again, if you're going hog wild and you're going for 4K or higher governor springs, you know, you really got to start getting into valve springs that are higher pressure. You need to start looking at your freeze plugs. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things you have to start doing to these Cummins. From my understanding is 450 horsepower and down, they're pretty stable as they are. You start pushing above 450 horsepower or above you know, 3000 RPMs, you start getting into blowing freeze plugs out or floating valves or overheating the back cylinders. So you need to put the uh, coolant bypass in, et cetera, et cetera. We're shooting for probably in the mid twos. We'll be really happy. We'll probably detune this down to, you know, the mid twos, maybe 300 horse. We're not needing a bunch of power. We just want a little extra power for climbing those hills with the camper. So that's about it. I think what we're going to probably do next is set the timing and then we'll tear into the AFC. We also have to do our power steering pump and deal with our fuel. Um, the fuel heater, as you saw, the wires are burnt up on it. We'll probably tear that all apart, maybe delete the fuel heater, um, show you the pickup screen and that, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll bring you back for the next video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.